Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Arturia Pigments 4 and Panic Man Walters brought up an interesting point to see if we can do some stuff with resonance. So I thought that was a really cool idea. So this week we're going to be doing interesting things with resonance. So to kick this week off, we're going to be doing a patch called This Resonates. And as you can see, we have Engine 1, Engine 2, and the Utility Engine completely unused. And we're basically just using self-oscillation to make this, this, uh, this tone here. So with that being said, let's take a listen to this track. It's kind of a spooky lead. So here we go. And then by itself, kind of like this here. It's cool to play this patch in a harmonic minor scale, and I was also slightly inspired by this really, really old 80s keyboard that I have. It's a very small pink Casio, which is kind of funny. And it has a similar sound in there. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and recreate this. So we have another copy of Pigments here. Let's go to a new preset. Now for our main one, let's turn off our effects because that changes the sound quite a bit here. So that's no effects going on right here. Okay, so what we first need to do is on our main patch, the uh, the new preset. Let's go ahead and new preset again, just in case. So let's turn off the first engine. The second engine is already going to be off by default. And let's just turn off the utility engine just for good measure. So if we play something... We can see that we're getting input, but we have no sound. So not all filters will self oscillate. So let's go over to the matrix 12. And the first thing we need to do is crank this resonance knob and kind of bring down our cutoff and see if we hear something. All right, so no matter what we play in our keyboard, right? So if I go to our keyboard tab, so you can see the keys here, it's gonna be the same note. So we need to have some key tracking and that's exactly what this KBD, this keyboard knob does. So we need to turn this all the way to the right at one. So we're actually playing different notes when we're playing different notes, right? We have a different pitch. Now, what we need to do is actually tune this, right? Because if we played a different note with this or played this played this with our song, it would be completely out of tune. So first things first, you know, if you want to know the exact value, it's going to be right here for this patch, 291. But I do believe 292 is going to be more exact, but I just chose 291 because it sounds a little bit cooler with everything considered. So with that being said, let's go ahead and tune this now. You can put in that value and get pretty far with that. But this is the way I went to tune this in case that's something interesting to you. So let's turn on this first engine here and then let's go from wavetable to analog. So we just have a saw wave. Maybe we can turn this down just a bit and send this to filter two, right? Because we want to tune this self oscillation. So we don't want to send another saw wave through that filter. Let's just send it to the second filter so we can hear this self oscillation tone and the saw wave. So we instantly know those two notes aren't in tune. Now, we know for a fact that the uh, the saw wave is going to be in tune, but not our uh, self-oscillation. So we need to go and match that kind of like how you would tune a guitar. So let's bring this down slowly and kind of just listen with our ears and get this in tune. Right, so it's somewhere in there. So right now we're on 294. You can kind of see it pulsating a little bit here. So we, we're close, but we're not really exact. So if we right click and kind of move to maybe 291 or 292, it's going to be more exact. It's going to be pulsating a little bit less. That sounds much better. But for consistency's sake, let's go to 291 and kind of build it from here. So now we have this in tune, so we can disable this analog engine here so we can turn that off. So we basically have a sine wave. Now, different filters will self-resonate a little bit differently. You can get a different tone out of different filters, depending on what you're going to do. So right here, we're in the Matrix 12. And if we look over here, we did a couple of different things. So we have the volume all the way to the top. And that's going to be kind of loud, but we're going to fix that later on with compression. And then also, instead of low pass 24, we're going for a low pass 12 to get a little bit more of those higher frequencies in. So we have a little bit more harmonics. So if we look over here on the top, and then we change it back to 24. We have much less harmonics to work with. So in this case, we're going to go for 12 to a little bit, a little bit more through. So like I said, this is pretty loud. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, working on this. So let's hop into the effects. We have some modulations we're going to get to in just a moment, but just some of the core, at least these first two effects we're going to get into. So let's turn this effects on, turn off FXB, and then kind of focus on A. So we have a core, we have a distortion, go into a compressor, and then a chorus. So first of all, 
we need to talk about this distortion because once we're sending the signal into our effects, we do want to change the harmonic content a little bit more and distortion or saturation is perfect for that. So hopping into the effects, let's go from delay to distortion. And I tried a different algorithms for this here, but I found tape sounds probably the coolest for this. So we can go to tape and you can experiment on your own if you'd like to, but I found tape is pretty cool. So on a drive, we're on 23.6. So we can bring this up to 23.6 here. We can right click. 23.6. Okay. Now, if we look over here on this dry wet, we see that this is on macro one at 100%. So this macro here is completely controlling the distortion. So while we're here, we might as well add that so we can drag this all the way down, click and drag this M1, this macro one on the dry wet, and then this Pi menu go all the way to the right at one. So now that's basically going to control the distortion, double click to rename it distortion. Now that's when that one is mapped and we're ready to go. So moving on from here, we have a compressor. Now this one's just kind of just catching things, keeping it a little bit more in check. So if we turn this on here, we're getting a little bit of gain reduction and a ratio is about almost five to one ish. So let's go ahead and add something like that here. So almost five and a half or almost five. So that's about fine. And then just bring the threshold down just a little bit until we get a little bit of gain reduction. Something like that's fine. Now, depending on the style that you would like as far as the attack and the release, you can go ahead and change that. I didn't really hear because this is right now at two milliseconds. I kind of wanted to get everything. I don't really want too much things poking through. And it gives it a cool sound as well. Okay, so next up we have chorus. So we turn this on here. And it makes things a little bit bigger, right? So uh, right now we're on zero, but this is controlled through a macro through this chorus here. So if we click on the second macro, we can see that it's just going to be this guy. So we can go ahead and add that as well. So this one is going to be at 47. So we can click and drag. Let's actually add the, uh, the chorus here. So we can bring this down and drag and drop this M2 here and bring this to 47, something like that. And I think our macro out of the box is kind of around, what, 0.376. So we can bring that 0.3. Seven six. That's kind of fine like that. And label this chorus. Now this really helps to kind of just make this sound a little bit bigger. Now, especially with this patch, I found it doing a lot of polyphony was kind of weird. So I changed the play mode to legato. So let's go ahead and do that before we get a little bit too far in here. Makes it pretty sweet. So next up we have delays and some shimmer. We're gonna come back to that because we do have some extra modulation that we need to do first. So with that being said, we have our basic sound going. Now let's take a look at our envelope. So our attack is gonna be a little bit slower at 21 milliseconds for our amp. So let's bring this up to 21 about, and then decay, I think it's about the same. Yep, and then full sustain, and the release is gonna be a little bit extended. So 332, 332 milliseconds, something like this here. Where are we? 332. There we go. And believe me, this lead actually cuts pretty well through any mix. Okay, so we have that done here. So what else are we looking at here? So we also have envelope two. So if you look at envelope two and click this here and we see what is this on? This is on the filter cutoff, right? So every time we hit a note here... We get a little bit of motion and that's kind of just opening up the filter a little bit to get a little bit more of the harmonics through our sound just once we hit those keys. So let's go and dial in this envelope right over here. So the attack I believe is one, which I don't I think that's default. Yeah. So really what we're changing is going to be the decay of 46 here. So 46 and then no sustain and the release is going to be 100. So no sustain and the release is 100. So really we just have to worry on the uh, decay and for the curve, did I change that negative 2.8? So slightly, so a little bit on the curve, negative 2.8. So now we drag and drop this onto, let's actually change our view, drag and drop this onto the cutoff. Now for the modulation amount is going to be 0 0.10 because we don't really want too much, right? Just a little bit like that. So our filter moves just a bit. Right. So next up, this one's going to be kind of interesting if you haven't seen this here. So we have a little bit of a vibrato kind of going on on this cutoff. So if we're doing this kind of resonance tone, the way to add vibrato right is to move the cutoff. As we can see, that's going there. So we're going to be using LFO 2. I don't know why I picked 2. I think I just, I don't know. 
I don't know why I did that, but anyway, let's just kind of get, keep with a patch here. So LFO2, let's take a look and see what's happening with that, guy. So we're going to be on free running, and it's going to be 7.15 hertz. So go free running, and then 7.51. And this is kind of a little bit faster than uh, the normal, but I feel like it kind of worked for the patch. Anywhere from like high fours to maybe high sixes is pretty decent for vibrato. <laughs> So if you look here as well, we're going to be doing some fade at 232 because we don't want the vibrato to just come in strong, right? We want a little bit of a, a little bit of a fade in. So 200 something's fine. What do we have exactly? 232. Amazing how fast I forget a value. Okay, so we have our LFO pretty much dialed in what we want. So let's click and drag this to the cutoff. Now that is massive, right? This is huge. How much is it changing? Listen to this. Basically, patch destroying, unless this is some sci-fi sound you want to go with, then sure. But we need to reduce this pretty low. So right, even at 0.1, I think that's what it is, 0 0.01 for this guy. Yeah, so 0 0.01. And even that's a lot. So if you ever run into this case where your LFO is a little bit too powerful, you can always put this on a mod wheel via sidechain and kind of control it via that way to get a little bit more fine control. So on our keyboard, my mod wheel is right down here. Let's expand this just a bit. So we have our mod wheel, right? So what we need to do, if we want to kind of introduce this vibrato via sidechain, we need to click on our modulator and then where it says sidechain, let's click this here and then go to our mod wheel. And then we want the value to be completely at one. So once we close this, if our mod wheel is down, we're not gonna have any modulation or vibrato. But once we introduce our mod wheel all the way to the top, for example, we're gonna have quite a bit. So this is kind of where the fine balancing comes in as far as how much of that do you want. It really depends how you want to play it, right? If you want a little bit more, kind of think of like theremin kind of vibes there. But yeah, that's kind of just how that works there. So moving on from here, I think we did, uh, no, we didn't add any glide. I thought we did. Anyway, maybe that's just a vibrato. Okay, so let's kind of uh, keep moving on from here. So... Now we need to get some more into the effects because this is kind of the rest of the uh, patch here. Because we have that kind of sound. So back in our effects, let's go to FXB. So this is going to be played a lot off delay, right? So we turn this on here with these two delays and then the shimmer. Okay, let's start getting into it. So let's turn off our shimmer and our first delay. So the first delay here, let's go ahead and add that. So this guy is going to be a quarter note, so one over four. And then I don't think we changed fine. A feedback 0 0.140, so a little bit less, 0 0.140. That's fine, 0.44. Ping pong, we're going to be adding that as well. And then we should, I mean, it really depends on how much of the lows you want to cut out. This is really going to be a pretty high plate patch, so you can do this. It's really up to you. But we do want to cut some of the lows, so let's kind of bring that down, something like here. What do we do exactly? Two, five, nine, seven. So are we two, five, nine, seven? That's fine. So this is also going to be in a macro because I have the delays and the reverb separated. So on this macro, we're going to have both delays. So this value is going to be at 38. So let's bring this up to 38, something like that. We're going to add the macros in just a little bit. So we have that one here, and then this goes into a, another delay. So let's bring this guy up here, and let's take a look at this guy. So we turn this guy back on. And right now we're gonna be at one over eighth dotted note. I think that combination of straight time and dotted time is actually pretty cool. So if we click this here, let's go to dotted only, and then we're gonna be on eighth dotted. Definitely pretty cool. And then we can do some ping pong. So our dry wet for this guy is gonna be 23. So we can bring this down just a, or bring it up actually 23. And then I don't think we changed too much here feedback. I think that might be default. Yep, 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 yep. And then doing a little bit of the low and high pass. So these are kind of just a little arbitrary, just kind of cutting the lows and the highs. The highs are more so important because we're going to be playing way up there for the most part. So three, five, five, three, the so three, five, five, three. That's kind of fine. Something like that. And then what do we do for the high pass? We're at 135. <laughs> So these, I don't necessarily go for a certain value, like specifically like the numbers, I just kind of move until it just sounds right. So reading it off, it kind of could sound like that, but I just want to let you guys know that. 
Okay, so last but not least is Shimmer. And this was kind of hard to decide. Do we want a regular reverb or a Shimmer? And I think for this patch, the Shimmer kind of sounded pretty cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we could make it a little bit more creepy and kind of do it semi-tone. We're actually gonna try that just to see what it sounds like because it's kind of cool to do that. But anyway, so right now we're at point or 22% for that. So bring this down to 22, because we really, really don't need too much. An important part though is gonna be the ducking, right? So 0. 0.464, let's bring that up, 0. 0.464. Because once we're doing a lot of notes, we don't want the reverb to wash it out too much, right? So 464, four, there we go, 464. And I think for the most part, we're kind of the same. I think, we, yeah, we reduced the size a little bit and then increased the modulation. So size 29.6, 29.6. And then what did we do for modulation? Four, so let's bring this up to max four. And there we go. pretty much exact here for this patch just out of curiosity so the pitch shift is by default up one octave here if you really want to make this kind of creepy all you really have to do is maybe go like down one semitone or maybe a little bit around there really small moves right Yeah, very interesting sound. So let's bring this back up to 12. So that's basically how this patch is constructed. The last things we need to do is add our macros for our delay. So the third macro is going to be delays. So let's go ahead and rename this and map those. So delay, D-L-A-Y-S, delays, there we go. So we can just drag and drop here quick here like that. And then this first one is going to be 37. So bring that down and bring this up to 0.37. And for the same thing for the next one, this can be 23. So bring that down and bring this down to 23. And bring our macro all the way up so our delays are active. And the last one's going to be reverb. So something like that and drag and drop on the dry wet. And we're at 22. So bring that down and bring this down to 0.22 and then bring up the reverb. pretty cool and it's also fun to experiment if you turn the sequencer on you kind of play with an arp or something like that But yeah, that's a lot of fun to play with it that way. But basically, that's how the patch works. If you'd like a free copy of this patch, there is a link in the video description below, and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video.